Well, at this point, we present to you one of our major conversations. It's a conversation with the ace economist, Kwame Pienim, also a member of the New Patriotic Party. What does he have to share this morning on the economy, uh, you know, the state of affairs? You'll be interacting with my colleague, Samuel Kojabris. Enjoy. Several uh, issues of national concern at play now, with some few days to election, a lot of people are calling for real actions. You know of the, uh, the fight against Galamse, where people are calling for the declaration of uh, in the state of emergency. You know of the uh, demonstrations that people have done and the uh, arrest thereof. And all the issues about, you know, Ghana's progress in terms of our democracy. Um, today we are lucky to be joined by a statesman who has really uh, been around for some time, helped shape the uh, destiny of this country, and he's still uh, around helping shape the, the future of this country. And I'm glad to have uh, with us um, the venerable Kwame Pienim to have a chat with us. He's an economist, but as a statesman, he cut across all the other areas. So I'm grateful to you, sir, for agreeing to speak to us. You are welcome. Mm. Let's start from the our democracy, for example. You've been around for a long time. You've seen the, the metamorphosis all these years. What do you make of where we are as a democratic state? I think democracy is always uh, in, in, it's aspirational. Every generation has to decide how they maintain our independence and our freedoms, freedom of speech, how we balance it uh, with other people's uh, rights. They say your right to swing your arm should end where my nose begins. It's a process. And I think that we haven't done badly as a country. You know, uh, We haven't had a civil war like other African countries. We have elections. Democracy is not about elections. It's about educating the people so that they know the issues properly and then being able to pronounce on the uh, issues and selecting people to represent us and having the means to let the people know when we think they are not listening or they don't have all the facts. Mm -hmm. And demonstrations are an integral part of democracy. We go out and tell the government, maybe you are not hearing. We are sitting by the fire. We know where it's burning. This is what we think you should pay attention to. And all of us as Ghanaians should be grateful to those who risk their job, their life, their limbs to go onto the streets uh, to demonstrate. So our democracy, uh, it's work in progress, it's going, it's not dying. When I hear young people say that, oh, we are tired of democracy, we are tired of this uh, 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 party system, people in South Africa are calling for the wise to come back, and people are saying, when is this democracy going to end? Mm. We have to make it work. So to you, it is not dying, as people say? No, it is not dying. There are individuals who come in, they may want to distort it. That's why every four years, the good people of Ghana are called to say, do you want to renew their lease? The answer is no, you go. Somebody else comes. So it is us, the people, who decide who governs at any given time. And that right is powerful. Mm -hmm. And we should not let anybody take it away from us. We should not let anybody buy it away from us. So you disagree with millennials who argue that, well, democracy hasn't probably worked for us. And so, I mean, we've, we're at a place where if the military intervenes, they're fine with it. Look, we have seen military intervention. What does it do? It takes it back. The only time a military intervention can be said to be justified is when somebody is making it impossible for us to remove and change uh, those who govern us. We've had it. Look, 
when I hear people say that, oh, Ghana will do uh, a Kenya. Kenya is 40 years behind Ghana. We had it. What was the Re uh, Rollins Revolution? It was the youth. They did worse than the Kenyans. They killed us. They shot us on the street. They sprayed us uh, with gas. People went into exile. People were killed. People had their feet tied and dropped into the sea. We've seen it. They say everybody over 40 should be shot. They've done it. We've been there before. Our democracy has survived this. So let's take it. You, the young people, the 50 years and below, you are in the majority. If you decide tomorrow you are the president, you are the president. But if they go and sell their vote, then we, the old men, will be there to do our foolishness. I remember when Rollins started and they had the people's uh, uh, courts and so forth. Anna Chacha was running in Kumasi, a hunchback. His symbol was banana. And he was going around, and people were following Achacha Necro, Achacha Necro. When the Achacha stopped, Asafo, he said, those of you wise people, if you don't participate, and we the fool get elected, and we go and we are doing our foolishness, don't talk. That was sound advice. I prefer me, my mouth is big, I talk. I don't want to live in Kagame's uh, Rwanda. You know, and what? that's why those of us who formed the new patriotic party, we say development in freedom. Development in freedom. Where we have to sacrifice development for you to be free, we sacrifice it. So we develop as long as you are free. Because the freedom is vital to our democracy. I mean, Kagami's Rwanda is the toast of the world. And you say you don't want to live in it? No. Isn't it better than what we have here in Ghana? No. I'm Puzzled. free to speak. If I spoke against Kagame and I ran away to South Africa, he's going to come and kill me. There's a, a friend of mine uh, who used to work for the World Bank, and he was always praising Kagame. You know, Ghana, we should go there. I say no. And then a friend of his who was working for Kagame went against them. He ran away to uh, Johannesburg. They went and killed him there. I don't want that. I was talking to my friend, Ethiopian, who was for the IMF. They were doing very well. I said, you are doing well. I said, no. We haven't solved our tribal problem. We haven't solved our constitutional uh, fundamentals. Look at Ethiopia. That was doing very well. They fought. They destroyed a lot of the things that they built. Mm. And if Kagame doesn't get it right, they will fight again and destroy all the things that he's building. We in Ghana, we've laid the foundation. Social, political cohesion. It's difficult, we are getting there. But Ghanaians are Ghanaians. When we are playing soccer against Nigeria, everybody's wearing the Ghana flag. Whether you are from Timbuktu, where you are from Wa, you are from Bogatanga, you are from Achinekrum, you are from Ofensu one people and we should protect that mm. the people you know uh, who protest we should revere them they are sacrificing mm. you sacrifice when you talk when you're a journalist and you do the heavy good interviews your boss may sack you why are you going to work but if you have freedom basic that's all we need to have sustainable growth that is not destroyed. Mm. But, but, but generally, when we do tough interviews, our bosses don't suck us. That's fine. That's the progress that is being made. Mm. Look at the newspapers. When Rekumbobe started, Rekumbobe, he fought for you to be here with a, a megaphone talking to me. Mm. They were chasing more all around. Radio Eye. He broke it. Then Chum and the others seize the opportunity, professionalize it. Mm. Now we have free press. 
when I was growing up, you want to do an international call, you go to post office, you, la you queue, then they call you, then you talk. Now, the Ashanti can say, you can call anybody, anywhere. Where? The Minister for Transport under uh, Rawlings started the liberalization. We could prevent the other's fault. Okay? Nane Kufuado made his political career as an advocate, freedom fighting, freedom of the press, talk, and so forth. That's how you, the press, we all built him up, mm. human rights activists. And that's what we wanted. That's why we put him there, to protect your human rights so that you talk freely. Mm. So to me, it's fundamental. It's a flaw on which you build any mm. development. Mm. Uh, let us come to the demonstration. But there was something you said which, I mean, Paul Kagame, yeah. if you say Paul Kagame is responsible for killing some people, you should have evidence because that's, that's a hard one. That those against the regime are yeah, killed. Are killed, yes. It's evidence everywhere. Go to Al Jazeera, go everywhere. Go and talk to uh, people. He rules with an iron fist. Okay? Every country, if you are lucky, Korea, they started with military, military dictators. They laid the rules. This road, two cars, not three. Mm. They put a guard race. Everybody obeys. You go to America. Here we are always talking about mindset, Ghanaian mindset. Mm. There is no Ghanaian mindset. I take you now and put you in London, put you in Paris, put you in New York. You obey the rules. When you go out here, you won't obey the rules. You urinate anywhere you want. Why? Because we don't, we don't implement the rules. We need a guard race. You need incentive systems. And then the sanctions. I was talking to a very experienced Ghanaian policeman. Say law and order to be able to implement it. It's like heat. You put the heat here mm. and say when you touch it, it will burn you. Whether you are a journalist, a president, a prime minister, parliamentarian, an office boy, watchman, you touch it, it burns you equally. Mm. That's what we need. The, that, the, the discipline that we need to implement laws. That's what we do now. Okay. So with all that you've said about the democracy and the fact that everybody has the equal right to speak up, yeah. with the way the recent demonstrators, the uh, Democracy Hub demonstrators who uh, went on demonstration and 53 of them were arrested, how do you describe that demonstration and the aftermath? Look, we've all been young before. Mm. When young people are allowed onto the streets, tempers will rise. They may do something foolish. Somebody who is risking to warn you that this country is on the precipice, we are going to all go into a hole and be dead. And he makes a mistake. In my village, we say, question the boy here. The one who is going to fetch water. Is the one who is likely to break the pot. Mm. You don't punish him for raising the pot. You know, if you pick them up for whatever they, in regard to a demonstration, you put them in police cell for two days, three days. Let them go. Why make matters out of them? Mm. Look, when we were fighting for uh, freedom, and Kuma and all these people were jailed by the British, what did we do? Instead of it being uh, something disgraceful, we changed it. We say prison graduate PG. It was a badge of honor. In the Commonwealth, most of our pre prime minister presidents had to go to jail before. Those people were raising our awareness. They don't deserve to be in cells. Mm -hmm. Those who deserve to be in cells are those who are destroying the environment. D do you understand what Galamse is doing? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, when they Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences yeah. came with their proposals. You know, they speak big English, things that do not translate well. And some of our journalists who were interviewing them also 
uh, had not done a lot of research to pin them down and ask them for answers. To break you know, it down. Break it down. Mm. I said, okay, if this galamsey is polluting the waters, what foods are absorbing these heavy metals? So if I buy yam, I said, I bought yam, it was cooked, I cut it. It's not white. It's sort of yellowish brown. It's yam, the tubers, cassava, uh, cocoa are they able to take in these uh, heavy metals so that when I eat it, I'm eating heavy metals? The lady, the professor on aquatic, Mali said, when we are eating the fish, it may have some of this and lobsters, some of these heavy metals may be there. You eat it. She didn't go down to see what does it mean. If you have lead in your body, as a woman, the research has been done. People are bringing forth children who are just one limb. Two eyes are fused together. They have no backside. They have no genitals to decide, to determine whether they are boys or girls. This is what we should be telling our commentators on the radio, the men and women. This issue is too big, it should not be politicized. It's a national issue. Do you want your wife, your sister, your mother, your cousin, to wait nine months to have a baby to deliver this monster. What does it do to them? And health-wise, you are ingesting mercury, cyanide, and all these heavy metals. Your kidney, those of us who have just one kidney or one, your kidney, your liver, are being destroyed. So it doesn't matter how much money you are making on Galamse, walking through the water, eating, even the water touching your skin and going in. You'll be dead in four years, five years. Is that what you want? Mm. But this is the information we need. If I'm eating gardeners, contumely and apim, the plantains, the CSIR should be doing research now, they should tell us the food and drugs uh, authority, Ghana Standard Board, should be telling us now, those of us eating gardeners, what fruits, watermelon, papo, mango, what fruits should we be careful about eating because they absorb these heavy metals that will kill us. When you put this information in a way that our journalists understand and our journalists interpret it to the broader people, mm. You are educating all of us. What do politicians on votes? If I'm going to die and I hear you, a politician, you don't have a proposal to solve this, they call existential threat. It means it will kill us. All of us. All of us. If it's existential to Ghana, there will be no water here. Mm. We we'll migrate to other people's land uh, to go and fetch water. All of us, you are drinking water bottled here from uh, Pong or from Wager. They cannot remove heavy metal from it. Ghana Water Company should tell us that. So you and I are ingesting that. Those few people who made a lot of money from it, the high politicians, may be drinking avian water. Do you drink avian water? No. Also, all of us are compromised. So. If a politician comes and says, this existential threat, I do not have a proposal, credible proposal, for resolving it in six months' time, he is not competent to govern this country. But all of them have put forth proposals. Who has put forth proposals? I've seen Mohammed's proposal. Mm -hmm. Who else has put forth proposals? I've seen uh, the Dr. Baumia Alan too has done I've it. I haven't seen Baumia's proposal. Okay. What has Bamiya said you do about it? About setting up, uh, uh, providing funds for these small scale miners because it is because they don't have funds, that's why they engage in the illegality to then upscale okay. into the large scale mining. Look, mm. alluvial mining, mm. illegal small scale mining, should be stopped completely. Okay. There is no economic, social, political reason for doing it. 
when I was young, when it rains, Fantino Tabompata from Prempa Assembly Hall, you could pick nuggets from the ground, gold nuggets from the ground. Okay. The land is used for agriculture. If there's cyanide arsenic pollution, it goes into the fruit, cocoa. There'll be residue. A time will come when the people are buying our beans will say they don't want our cocoa because the residue, the cyanide, the arsenic residue is too high. Our fruits, if they get into it and the scientists will tell us, they may not want it. So agriculture is dead. If you don't have food security means feeding yourself. Mm. If you don't feed yourself, you are not a country. Mm. Why is there water irrigation for irrigating our farms? It will not be there. So your health is important. If water is uh, polluted with lead, you know what lead does to your brain? It means you are going to be bringing forth imbeciles. People cannot think. If you do not have young people who are thinking, educated, ICT savvy, and can have the, the technology, the knowledge to mine your gold, and so forth. Foreigners come and mine it. They give you 5% and say, oh, they are taking, they are giving us a pittance. The minerals don't belong to you if you are not smart enough to use it. Because the monkeys were walking on the gold. We say we sit on gold. The monkeys were sitting and working on the gold. What did it benefit them? So the brain of your people is important. So if somebody is doing something that is destroying the generation who are coming, it's problematic. So you are so you are not inspired by the proposals by the, the, the candidate, those you mentioned that you've seen. Look, the president <clears throat> should be commended. He made taking a step in the right direction is not enough. We want the president to feel because we say that, oh, it's not this government that is responsible for the guarantee. It started gradually. Rolling time, they went, they shot a whole lot of people who were doing Galamse. It didn't stop them. Oh, really? Ben Williams, when he was uh, a chief executive of State Gold Mines, he decided employment in the State Gold Mines, the natives there, 10% of all employment was blocked for them. Some of the mines were given part of their concession to the small scale people to say, you mine it. Tailings, when you finish, what was left? People were there until Sam Jonah became the head of uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti. Then uh, he took uh, he he took yeah, he took uh, the uh, tailings, brought a new technology, blazed it. Then they started taking the gold from it themselves. It was small, small. It's built up. Now we reach a critical mass we are at the edge one more step we are in look at our rivers i don't know how old you are but i don't think you've seen water our rivers and cobra you see then you can see the bottom mm. you can see the fish mm. you can put a trap in it all our fish i hear that all our fish are gone i travel from uh, sunyanaba road coming through barakesi Abrepo Junction. Except for Barakesi, all the rivers, muddy little spots. Is that what we want? So it reached a crisis. When the airline to mine gold from the forest reserves was laid down, you know what the legislative instrument is? Mm. You put it like PRC want to increase tariff. They prepare a legislative instrument, they put it there, Parliament. 21 days, if nobody comments or objects, it becomes law. All of us were sitting here. I'm also responsible. But, but did anybody know that that ally was in parliament? How many people knew? It doesn't matter. That's what you people, investigative reporting is mm -hmm. all about. When the 275 representatives of us in parliament, didn't they see it? Mm -hmm. That's what they are paid to do. They didn't tell us. 
and those who are activists should have been able to say, this poses danger to our forest. When Frimpong Boateng was talking about it, and the police, the intelligence, asked him to report there, how many of us joined him in protest that this guy is protecting the land and soils, which we are just caretakers. We are supposed to protect it and hand it over to generations yet on board. But the Office of the Special Prosecutor called him to provide further details. It wasn't uh, something that then we could have joined him because we felt he was being arrested. It was only an invitation by the Office of the Special Prosecutor. Yeah, but I mean, even when someone is invited, oh, I mean, he had to go there and sign his man. And had to, he bailed himself. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. He brought someone to bail him. Mm -hmm. Who should have gone there? Or should have protested? And then the government said, hey, maybe the issue he raised is uh, after, he's a member of the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. The Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences has been issuing this. I think the one I heard very clear was Professor Mrs. Uh, uh, Mama uh, Enswa mm -hmm. Mensa. Mm -hmm. That, look, this problem is coming. We didn't do anything. But you see, to me, this crisis just shows that we have to change some of the ways we do something. Okay. There are lawyers in the Academy of Arts and Sciences. They should reach out and get some communication experts, professors in communication there. So when they are communicating with the people, things they think are important, they should communicate in a way that the average person So simple language. Ecocide and mm -hmm. all these things is a big people don't understand it. Mm -hmm. And then, also when they finish the, uh, the lecture, mm -hmm. have a press engagement, if they think it's of existential threat to us, have a press engagement where leading journalists, editors, are invited, all regions, and then you give it to them. This is the problem. This is how you reach out. You don't just send a letter uh, to government. Mm. When the people hear and the people are agitated, the government will hear. Okay. You know, so it's a lesson. Mm. You know, that's a lesson I learned uh, from the corporate world as mm. chairman of United Bank for Africa, Ghana. When a mistake is made, we do a detailed analysis. No lies, no pleasing anybody. Was it a system failure? Was it lack of policy? Was it a human failure? The human failure, was it motivated by greed, fraud, ignorance? If it is ignorance, you know how to educate the people. If it's greed, you need to get a person and sack the person and correct it. So all of us made mistakes from those who issued uh, this airline from all of us mm -hmm. uh, who didn't see it. It is not one political party. Okay. All of us should sober now. We need to halt, pause, reflect. So the president is right in saying, I'm putting a halt. The, Council, the uh, Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences put a halt on that. So we freeze all licenses, mm. freeze all operations, not for one year, six months. Everybody who's running to become president should tell us their proposal now, what they are going to do about it. This entails scientific research. The medical doctors should tell us what it's doing to the uh, genetic reproductive systems of our women who are there and the women and all of us here in Accra who are eating the food. And then the geologist should come tell us how it is impacting the soil for agriculture. Mm. And then when you have this a presidential commission and those who are not president yet can say, I'm setting up a committee of scientists, technologists, lawyers to look into this. When I become president on the 7th of January, I'll convey this 
<coughs> into a presidential commission. Their results will come within three months. I have the right solution that will solve this problem for all of us. So this is like the pact that Labour called for, which the presidency says we are ready to commit to a pact. Is, is that what you're looking for? That all the candidates should commit to a pact? That I don't want them to commit to a pact. Okay. Action program. It's action. We're, look, it's here. If you want to be president now, and you don't know how you are going to solve Ghana, I'm saying Ghana, mm. you are not competent to be president. Has any of them impressed you with how they want to deal with Ghana, I'm saying? All that I've heard, no. I mean, I heard uh, President Mahama, he was talking about the employment, if you said, look, that would not help it. The money, see, this economy is anchored on gold. Since when? It was anchored on cocoa, on timber. We are moving. It can be anchored on IT. When something is I illegal, it is not permitted. Can you imagine if we were to send, if we were to send 100,000 young people whom we are the strong see, to go into Dubai, outside the world, to do prostitution, the dollars they will bring in will probably be equal to the gold. Do we want to do that? Where prostitution do? Why not? What else? Arm robbery. We can also send them to do arm robbery. Arm robbery. It's people's profession. Those it's are illegal. All, those are all do social it. vices. Eh? Those are all social vices. Yeah. Mm. But when you are putting metals into rivers that are causing women to bring forth to monsters, when you are destroying people's livers and kidneys, what is that? It's not a vice. When you are putting us in a way where, and they say, what, uh, maybe 20 years, 15 years, we have to be importing water. From where? The waters are destroyed. There's no fish in it. Ghanaians are protein was coming from fish. What fish? Fish from the sea, but largely from our rivers. Yeah. We can, if you can't drink water, if you don't eat, you can survive for a longer. You are not drinking water or not breathing, you die. So this is an existential issue. Let people pronounce where we know where they stand. If they are too cowardly to pronounce on it, then we don't need to vote for them. Yeah. You know, my friend, uh, not my friend, uh, used to be somebody I was mentoring, Dr. A free, are you a free? Okay. Uh, the, if you just say MP. Yeah. Who is saying we are not stopping today, we are not stopping tomorrow? If he doesn't change his mind, some of us will be there to tell the people to vote against him. Anybody who wants to continue the way things are, it's a nation wrecker. And we should not vote for him. Mm. He has no business in parliament. Mm. He has no business in any official position. Mm. And if anybody comes in, they propose him for parliament, we'll go to the parliamentarians and tell them to vote against him. Okay. They propose him for chief executive, we'll go to the council of state to reject him. This problem is serious. It should not be politicized. But everybody who wants a political position in Ghana, especially the elections are coming, we don't want, after the election, demonstrations on the street. Whoever comes in should be given time. So I say, all of them, pronounce now. Sit with your team, reflect, and tell us what you are going to do. Employment, create other employment, apart from those employments that are killing us. Okay. Let's listen to the scientists, the Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences. Mm -hmm. Let them speak in a language we understand. Let's listen to them. And if anybody want to govern this country and is not bold enough, smart enough, innovative enough to come up with proposal that will create job for the young people. Those of you, 50 years and below, who are going to be having children, when you close your eyes, look at that baby with no limbs, no arms, with no backside, no genitalia. That's what you are going to have. 
That's what is facing us. Mm. Your kidneys will be destroyed, not because you are drinking alcohol. Your brain will not work. You have no future in the highly technology intensive world that we live in. ICT, all the things that are coming, you need your brains. And you won't have the brain to work. That's what is facing us. So, were you then disappointed when organized labor, after gathering the momentum over the days that they want to strike because government was not acting and calling it off at the 11th hour, were you disappointed? No, not disappointed. I think that the show government demonstrations are just to say, like a child, Daddy, this is not fair, to draw Daddy's attention. They've drawn our attention to it. When organized labor goes on strike, it affects you and I. Why should a pain be inflicted on us for other people's inaction, for other people's commissions? I said the president has made one fair step. No more licenses. All the licenses that have been issued on uh, so-called small-scale mining, community mining, mining in the forest reserves, mining along river sides, mining in rivers, stop immediately. It's a criminal offense to do that. If but, anybody's caught, he should be dealt with. But the president said this about six months ago, that forests, uh, reserves, and river bodies are red zones, which means that nobody should mine there, but it, it, didn't, it didn't stop anything. Yeah, but you see, when it is said, that's why I say the president has done his part. Mm. You and I should also do our part. I think that the media has been excellent leaders in this. They go there, they show us what the water is like. I saw one which was fantastic. They show the pristine water, clear water flowing in China. They show ours. It's showing all of us. It's showing the illiterates, the illiterates in the villages. All of us. It's not big language. It's photo. We see it. We should continue. It's existential. Maybe people are too queasy. They don't want to show the picture of these babies. But we should show them. We should show the young people who have kidney problems, who are dying. Those boys who are working on the man, when you go, they say community. They say the chiefs. How many chiefs have an army? Mm -hmm. People are there, they are armed. The chiefs can do nothing. And people say, oh, uh, let's hand over the lands to the chiefs and the president to uh, govern. It's, it doesn't make sense. Before you get a mining license and you are you issued a prospecting license, before you even use it out, they send a document and paste it around the area you are supposed to go. People see it, the chiefs see it, the young people see it. That's when they are supposed to make a comment to say, this, and this is what it may bring. Mm. That's when the eco uh, activists, eco conscious citizens, should go and say, this. Mm. those who have the knowledge will say, this is what it will do. Unless you do A, B, C, D, and E. You need an environmental assessment impact. Mm. That should be done. And people apply two weeks, three weeks, they visualize into them. Where is the environmental? impact assessment that was done by EPA. From what I know, three weeks, I'm not sure. Do, do you have any who got it within three, three weeks? They, they, we should be able to do that. Mm -hmm. EPA should do their work. Mm -hmm. As I'm saying, all the research institutions should now actively come out and educate us. Mm -hmm. Those of us who are eating apim, kuntumri, and pisi, uh, kukuyam, and so forth, what is it doing to us? Tell so, us so, now. So, so you were you were not expecting labor to go on strike when they when they declared it. No, no, no. That, to. No, if the president had not acted mm. and they had said they are going on strike, mm. I would have joined them. Okay. Those who are saying that they still want to be able to be on the street to show not just government but all Ghanaians that we have this existential threat, I'm prepared to wear a red armband. In support of them that there's a threat it's imminent it is now this problem has been growing they say go back to 1989 mm -hmm. until they brought in uh, serious 
uh, Chinese equipment yeah. uh, during uh, Dr. Kwabne J's time, and then it continued. But now next time is when we issued this airline mm. to go into the forest. forest. Yeah. In our time, that we issued 1,500 and over licenses. So we now reach a crisis, mm. which is an existential threat, which is a threat against us as humans. But is the, is the issuance of the license the issue? Because this, this is the government that said, we will regularize small-scale mining. How we, do you do it? You only have to issue licenses. We, is that we, not it? We, we cannot regularize. Okay. If anybody tells you they can formalize the uh, small-scale illegal mm. man, they can regularize it, it it's hot wash. Okay. Look, small-scale illegal mining is profitable. Because you do it, and who bears the cost? The society, not you. Yeah. Yeah. If they have to invest money to clean up the heavy metals they put in the ground, which is the cost, if they have to uh, bring people, clean it up, and then plant things mm. to absorb the heavy metals from it, it's a cost. The air that they pollute when you burn the mercury goes into the air, some go into the cell. If they have to pay the woman with that child, anywhere they sue them mm. and they have to pay. If they were bearing that cost, Pelham says it's not profitable. Mm. It's profitable because you take a shovel, you take a pickaxe, you go, you dig, mm. you hide in a room, and you burn. Yeah. These people haven't done chemistry. They don't understand what burning this metal, which is going through your nose, what is doing to your body. They do not understand it. How do you formalize it? You cannot formalize it. Because when you formalize it, it becomes too expensive. They won't do it. Okay. So if somebody says, I'm going to formalize it, I'm going to be like, no. Let's but, but the licenses are given to the small scale miners yeah. so that they will do what the Minerals Commission says they should do, responsible mining. If you don't do that, it goes against you. I know that small scale miners, after you finish mining in, in an area, you have to reclaim that area. But, but we, are, we are talking about the illegal small scale miners, people who have no license, right? All of it is okay. Those who are doing the mining, the waters, and so look, if Minerals Commission mm. were doing their work properly, they would have been in the field monitoring the activities. EPA should have been in the field monitoring whether the environmental uh, standards they gave to them are being complied with, okay? Look, when you are in government, you should not try to micromanage, but you micromonitor to see if things are wrong. Forestry Reserve, what are they doing there? So the president said, I've done taking a right step, but we need more. Should I remove all the commissioners at the Minerals Commission? Forestry reserve, all the people about it. remove them. Then we know that you know they were non-monitoring. Why ask the minister who's been doing this that are led to this disaster to be the one you are asking to monitor this cleanup? Mm -hmm. We need an independent presidential commission of scientists, doctors, engineers, geologists, social scientists political, uh, politically minded people to sit and say, solve this problem six months from now until. And if those running for the presidency then commit that this is serious the way the president wants to do it. When we come, we'll renew the mandate of this presidential commission. And when they finish, we'll take a good look at it. And then the, uh, the faith parliament of the First Republic, their priority act will be to legislate so that we have a holistic, medium, long-term solution mm. to this. Okay. And also, the president mm. should have added, needful should add, we we'll consult with our development partners, those with the technology and the resources, to help us 
to go and clean up the heavy metals in these river bodies and dress up the land to its pristine level. Then we know people are serious, people are thinking, people are acting. But if you are a presidential candidate and you say that you are going to continue this because it creates jobs, yeah, we should die, who are going to do the job? The young people. So those of you 50 years and below, who are going to be having children? You are the majority in this country. When we are voting, mm. don't vote for somebody who will bring you gold for you to die, for you not to have a child to have your name, not to have a child to inherit your father's name, if you respect your father. Because mm. your legacy is your name, if your name is worth anything. Because when you do something wrong, or in 10, 15 years, when you want to become president, and you think people don't know you, people will say, ah, in age base, never know no. That's useless, you know. That's what they will say. Mm. So your name is the most important thing. And tell all those 50 years, the women and below, the commentators, you will not be able to pass on your good name to your children if this process continues. Mm. Now, some unions still say that even though government has deployed military to the river bodies and forests to deal with this, they still want a state of emergency to be declared. Is this something you support, that the president should do that to help us fight this? Yeah, a state of emergency. Mm. It is, means a state of urgency. This is urgent. It needs to be resolved. It needs to be taken a look now. The solutions cannot, if we start immediate solution, we all think we know the solution. It may not be the solution. It may be a patch up work. What I'm saying is that we have two months almost before the election. Every candidate should have a proposal. The president has led the way. He should continue and say, this is a problem. I'm going to try to solve it. I'm talking with development partners so that we have solutions. And whoever is coming, commit. It's a problem. And I'm saying, if you are young, under 50, and the only employment that any presidential candidate is promising you is this job that is killing us, mm. killing our rivers, no fish in our rivers. None of us is safe. The only people who are safe are those rich enough to be drinking avian water. Okay. So if you are not drinking avian water in Ghana now, and you are voting, don't vote for anybody mm. who says, okay. I'm going to continue this. So the president shouldn't declare the, 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 the state of emergency? I'm not saying that. If he says a state of emergency means everybody, the police, military, everybody is put on alert mm. that you see anybody uh, mining in the riverside, in the rivers, grab them and bring them. You know, our traditional uh, worship, the rivers were gods. You wouldn't go near a river and urinate around the river. Mm. There are some times you don't go to the river on a certain day. Mm. It's a sacred. So our rivers were clean. Fish were there. As you want to go and swim in it, you put your hook, you catch fish and go home. Now we are destroying with Christianity and uh, Muslim religion. Mm. Why? Why those who brought the religion to us? Go. There are rivers are fine. When they pollute it, they clean it up. Mm. So you and I, we have a problem. Okay. We allow this problem to come. We are now on the edge. We can flip. Mm. Any emergency the president can declare, he should do it. It's not a political issue. It's not MPP or NDC. I am MPP. Everybody knows that. I'm saying if you take Bamiya, I know him very well. President Mahama, I know him. He calls me uncle. Respectful young man. But I'm seeing everybody, Alan, Cheddar, all the people, Akwiadonko, 
all of them who think they want to become president of Ghana, tell me one thing. How are you going to solve this existential threat? Existential means your very livelihood. You may die in four months, in three years, four years. That's what we are talking about. It's like somebody is pointing a gun at your forehead. All the demonstrators are saying is that there's a gun pointed at your forehead. Why do you want to punish him for telling you that? It doesn't matter if they uh, broke something. Put him in cell for one day or even a few hours, let him go. They serve the society. So you think their, their case should be called off, it should be cancelled? Yeah. Nana himself, for about 20, 30 years, he was an activist, mm. demonstrating against military regimes. He never spent one day, one week, one hour in a police cell. Why shouldn't it be the same against people who think they are demonstrating against him? But should he be blamed for what the police is doing? Huh? Should he be blamed for the police, uh, for, for the actions of the police? No. We should blame the police. We should blame the RGP. I don't believe in blaming the guy at the top for all this. No, no, no. We should blame. When you are walking on the street, you are doing something bad. They call your father's name. Correct? They don't call and call your great-grandfather's name. The president is there. He's doing his job. Who is the minister responsible for lands and mines? Let's blame him. And not even him. Go down. The Minerals Commission. Why are they issuing licenses as if uh, there's no tomorrow? Let the president remove them. Forestry Commission. Why did they sit in the forest? There are people are there for it to be degraded to this extent. Remove them. But some, some people say the way the demonstrators were treated, it is as if someone at the top wants to teach them a lesson. Can't that be true? No. Nobody is teaching anybody a lesson. Look, there are some, a few officers who believe that they are doing the government job. I mean, when we were in prison, there was a prison officer in his 50s. Rollins was barely 30. Say Rollins is his father. So if you are again Rollins, he will deal with you. He beat prisoners to death. Beat them to death. And yet, when civilian constituent came in, this guy was made president of the Ghana Olympic Committee. I felt sick to my stomach because I saw him. You know? Yes, so, but, but if he was rewarded for what he did, then of course he was doing someone's bidding. He thought he was doing Rollins' bidding. But Rollins didn't tell him to do anything. When we are put in prison, being there is enough punishment. It doesn't say the warders he will also beat you up as punishment. What I'm saying is that the police, when they go on the streets, is to preserve law and order. Mm -hmm. Young people, I've been young before. You've not been old before because I'm 86, yeah. there are people who are 90, 100. You develop wisdom as you go. Young people have heat in their blood. So when they go onto the street, they are demonstrating they do something foolish. Okay. I heard President Kruger said, when a child is, you know, on your lap, you wipe it, you don't cut it. You slap it on the bottom small. Putting himself for a day is enough. The president has the power of amnesty. Declare amnesty and remove them from the cell so that they go. And the guy is telling you there's a gun pointed to. So you your want head. the president to declare, to, to call, to say that, well, leave them, let them go? Yeah. He says he doesn't want to uh, interfere, but he can give amnesty, he can give a pardon, he can pardon them. He can wait for them to send them before he does it all. Before, when we're in prison, people whose cases were being heard had not even been heard. You give the man mercy and they walk. Even you before know? the final judgment is given, the, the president can do that. that be, look, I'm saying mm. people who speak their mind, like my friend Yahoo Tamaklo, uh, 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 from Bombo, to know these people, they are sacrificing. Their families will not be given contracts. They will not be invited to state occasions and social occasions and so forth. It's enough sacrifice. 
Why punish them? They are telling us, a gun is pointed to your head. He mm. said, Kofi, why did you jump through the window to come and tell me that? Okay. I'm going to punish you. Okay. You are going through the right door. Okay. All right. You say um, organized labor should, should not go on strike to demonstrate against something that someone is not acting on. I mean, they were demonstrating against government's inaction. Yeah. They said, we, the general public, should not suffer for someone's inaction. No, uh, yeah, I said, but mm -hmm. I say, look, I wouldn't make any rule for it. When their leadership decide they have to go, they have a right to go. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying is that the general public, we don't have any powers. Mm -hmm. The powers we have are to join them in the demonstration. Mm -hmm. The powers we have are to tell the people in our constituency, this is going wrong, uh, we should move there. They have a right to do that. Okay. What I'm saying is that they say they will join it. They've already alerted us. Mm -hmm. They were signaling to us that something was wrong. Mm -hmm. They've done it already. Okay. So that's fine if they are not going. Mm -hmm. But if somebody but, still wants to... But UTAG yeah. has declared a strike because of this. Fine. That is... The, look, democracy okay. is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Diversity of opinion. Mm -hmm. UTAG says, we are not happy with this. We, UTAG may have more information as to how present this is, and that the president's actions are not adequate. Mm -hmm. I say it's in the right direction. He needs to do some more. We should encourage the president to do some more, mm -hmm. and we should encourage all those who want to lead this nation to declare their position so that we can judge whether they are adequate or not to face the problem. Okay. Now, and finally, they, before, before we wrap up, yeah. another issue that has to do with our democracy is the Electoral Commission's you know, preparedness for the 2024 election. The NDC says there are so many issues with the register. So, I mean, let's uh, audit them. The EC says we have a process by which we are and we've taken care of it. They met them as the EC, uh, NDC bring every evidence uh, the EC says we're going to ballot. The NDC says don't ballot. Let's resolve the issues. You are a statesman. When you sit back and you watch how things are, you know, progressing, what 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 should the EC do? Because this is quite critical an election. You know, as far as I'm concerned, mm. what is killing this nation? Which, if we don't get rid of, will never do well. It will threaten our democracy. It's sicko fancy. Okay? Mm. Every time at the IPAC, some of these smaller so called political parties will come in and support the government, and the government thinks they have a responsibility to support the Electoral Commission. We do not have a responsibility. Everybody who is given a job, you are a judge, a electoral commission, a policeman, you do the job to the best of your ability. You don't want any doubt. They say Caesar's wife should be above suspicion. Mm. Also, I see things. Either they have a built-in audit system which should work, mm. and if it's not working, and it's proven that the audit system didn't work when somebody was able to transfer people. Mm. Open it, plain. Open the system. Bring your IT aspects. Bring your IT aspects. Work with our people to go through. All of us want a clean register. If you are the electoral commissioner, your job is not to help A or B win. Your job is like a football referee to referee it. So my thing is this, don't let us be discussed this, this on radio, on air. So those talk a lot of, in Ghana, those who talk do not know, and those who know do not talk. Let's get IT especially, sit down with the commissioners, IT, vet the system, so that we all know that this system is good. Human things, they may be errors, but find out the loopholes and correct them. Instead of always being on the defensive, and the governments in power have always protected an electoral commission. Why? The same people. When MPP is in opposition, oh, we want the register to be said. 
when we are in government, oh, the lady says, all right, why do we do that? Then the queer don't go. We'll go and say, oh, uh, letter commissioner, even though she's young, she's my mother. When did she become your mother? If somebody is talking, let's sit back. Please put your information before. Electoral Commission, invite them. The Peace Council, this is the time they should get involved and say, look, Madam, bring your IT person, bring your IT NDC, bring your IT person. Take a look at the audit system. Sometime, somebody would have turned off the audit system. If the audit system is working, it means when you go in at 2 a.m. and you transfer my name to another uh, constituency, at 10 p.m., when Kingsley comes and is a boss, he goes and the system will tell him, oh, Brace was here and he did this. Then he goes, why did you do that? And so this is my authority for doing that. So don't let us be uh, defensive. Let the electoral commissioner, after all the register is clean, it's good for you. Then when we finish the election, Everybody bring your representative. When we finish, everything is clean. You lost, you won. In four years time, those who won may lose, depending upon what the people want. Mm. Democracy is the people's capacity on an agreed regular basis to choose those whom they want to govern for them. And we should keep it that way. We don't want them, let's go and vote. If the military takeover or somebody at the street takeover, it's even worse. Then you and I, who are not strong, mm. okay. how are we going to defend ourselves? Mm. Rule of law is important. But all of us being governed under the rule and developing, making progress in peace and in democracy is good. So I urge all the young people, democracy is bumpy. It's the worst system in the world, selecting a few people to go and represent uh, all of us. But if it wasn't there, we have to reinvent it. It's the only way that we know it's work. Communism, when you take it, you put the people there, okay. then some people become better than others. Mm. So let's we'll continue with it. Okay, all right. Thank you so much for talking to us. My pleasure. It's been an engaging interaction with Mr. Kwabi Pienim, a statesman and economist, and a member of the governing New Patriotic Party. Share a comment on our socials and let's keep this conversation going. Thank you.